Welcome to Straight Talk with Carlissa Thorne. And I have with me once again a wonderful colleague, Corey Jenke. And today we're going to be talking about leadership based customer service. So, welcome, Corey. How are you? Oh, fantastic. I'm always good when I can talk to the famous Carly. <laughs> I wouldn't say famous. I think you're equally famous in customer service and leadership. So I love the way you communicate, communicate and talk about leadership, especially since you're always dealing with basics on talking about leadership and equally that the, because you're always dealing with customer service where you work. So let's deal with some of these wonderful customer service tips that you deal with on a daily basis. Well, you know, one of the things I, I really think is interesting is here we are in business and we, and we go ahead and we put millions of dollars into this structure and we probably put even more millions of dollars into advertising and we put almost no effort or money or time or training or concern into the people that we're putting directly in front of the customer. You know, and, and we make things so difficult for people these days by, by creating phone services that, that are almost mind-boggling even for people like myself who deal with them on a daily basis and yet we say to the customer, your call is very important to us. Well, not important enough to actually answer it or to hire enough people to take it. Well, all right, if you're going to be honest, your money is very important to us. That's how the customer hears that. And what I want people to understand is that, you know what, the customer is somebody that we want to make an experience that is so much more than we promised. And we want to make it so much easier than we said it would be for them that the money literally flies out of their wallet and their respect and the mutual benefit that we get from the transaction is just, you know what, unbelievable. And many people act like that's not really possible anymore. Oh, well, we're, we're really in these busy worlds and, and that it's almost acceptable not to treat the customer in the way the customer wants to be treated. So what, I, what I've been doing lately has been writing several blogs to just, you know what, give some of the basics back. Because I think one of the things that I think is just amazingly tragic is that so many things now are almost like bonuses that should be what I would call the price for entry. You know, if you call a place and you get someone who knows what they're doing and are friendly and outgoing and talks to you like a person and doesn't read off the script, you almost feel like you got a bonus when really that's the way it should be, don't you think? I think that's true, and I think here's the problem that I see. If you go to a lesser store, I like I would say at Kmart, and I'm not going to say, it, now when I say Kmart or Walmart or whatever store I mention, I don't want people to think that I'm actually saying something about those stores. I'm not. I'm just using examples that the problem was in people's minds, I think they think if they go to a lesser store, whether it be a Kmart or Walmart, or then they go to a higher store like a Macy's, a, a Saks, okay, that because of the level of stores that they're getting better, better customer service in one place than another. And what I'm going to propose is that I don't care if you do go to a Kmart, a Walmart, a Saks Fifth Avenue, or a Macy's, that we need to start training all employees, I don't care where the store is, that every single employee needs to learn customer service the same way everywhere. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, I mean really that's what gives us our opportunity in life. Our ability to serve others is, is everything in our ability to become successful. When you and I think, I think every human being deserves to have that same respect whether it is a Kmart, Walmart, Saks Fifth Avenue or Macy's. And again, like you said, having that experience to have the money flow out of the wallet the same way no matter what store it is. And I think we need to start training people as again, I want to be treated how I want to be treated is the same way we want other people to treat us that we start treating people that way from the time they're born again cheating, treating and teaching our children how to treat others up through and the problem with our school systems I think and again that's where it begins they're not learning it in the schools we need to start teaching our children how to treat people and I think that's even beginning where customer service begins and I think, and that's where we're failing in this country, as far as I'm concerned, is we're not teaching our children how to treat other people. And as far as, and that's where I think, like I said, where customer service begins, because those are basic manners. Basic manners 
is customer service. Do you not agree? Oh yeah, one of the things that I want to do is, is you know, start out by defining what's a customer. A customer in my eyes is anyone to whom you have the opportunity to add value. So by that definition, of course the people that give you their money are your customers, but your spouse is a customer, your children are customers, your parents are customers, your siblings, your friends, even the person who takes your money. So for instance, when I go in the restaurant and I sit down and, and the waitress walks over and she goes, what do you have? And I go, hey, how are you doing today? And she's like, what? Well, you know, I you look like you're busy, and I just want you to know that, hey, I'm not in any hurry. So, you know what, if you need to spend more time on another table, go right ahead. Really? Yeah. And then when she comes over to order, you know, to take your order, and you say, can I, yes, get this word, please have A. And would it be possible to add B to A? And thank you so very much for taking care of me tonight. All of a sudden, you're like the different table. You're the table that she's tripping over herself to wait on. You're the table that she wants, and because she's a fellow human being and deserves respect, the table that she deserves. It's fascinating. When you adopt an attitude of serving others, no matter where you go and what you do, it's amazing the doors you open for yourself. So what happens? She comes and refills your drink like four times more than she would other people. She thinks of those things that she wouldn't normally bring in advance unless you ask, like ketchup and butter and so forth. And then, of course, she is actually thanking you for shopping there. So I think one of the things that we need to realize is that how we impact other people directly affects our success. I was just reading yesterday in a book, you know, if you want your spouse to, you know, want you to come home, you have to be the kind of spouse that she wants to come home. It's really that simple. Your, your spouse is a customer. And when you treat customers not just nicely, but as if they're the most important person you're talking to at that moment, like you right now are the only person in the world as far as I'm concerned, then you're going to get the benefits that goes with that. It's just basic math, Carly. I love the analogy you just brought up because it's so true. So many partners wonder why there's the separation or the divorce rate or they wonder why a partner stays out late or goes to a bar or doesn't want to come home. But it's so true. If you're going to nag or be moody, grumpy, and I'm not going to say other words, to a partner, why would they want to come home? It's like you, it, You're absolutely right. It's basic and I'm going to say this, common sense. So in a lot of ways, and again, I'm going to go back to, again, I think a lot of it is basics. If you want people to treat you a certain way, you need to also treat people that certain way. And that's why I, I still will go back to how we treat and raise our children. And so I, and, and I love it. I love this conversation too because, again, it also goes all the way back to the basics. It's almost like ABCs. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I love that we were talking about you know leadership too because we are leading. We're also as we lead is how others follow. Just like when children watch us, we don't think they're watching us, but we are. They are. So everything that we do is not just what we say; it's what we do. So when our children are watching us, therefore that's what they're going to then do. They follow us, right? So. We're leaders. We're leading. And this is what this conversation is about. It's leadership customer service. So I think it's a really valuable topic to actually have. And, and I, I just think it's a wonderful conversation. So thank you for actually uh, choosing the topic, if you will, to have today. And I love your blog posts, by the way. I always, I always love sharing them and making them go viral because they're such wonderful. And I, and, and I, I specifically like the way that you write. Because it's not just that they're really a great topic, but what I love about your writing and I love about you in general and why I love having you on is that you have this wit about you and this sense of humor. Because if we can't laugh at ourselves, and not only just laugh at ourselves, laugh with others or bring humor to a blog post, if you're writing about something that's really serious, and I think there is some levity to some things, you have to put some humor in it. Because if you don't, it's just... 
you know, it's, I don't think it's, it's as much fun to read a blog post. I think everything needs to have some light with it. You understand what I'm saying? Well, yeah. You know, the, the post that I, that I really wanted to talk about that I, that I wrote recently is called, I Can't Believe He Said That. And, and so here's what happened. I, I subbed at a store recently, and, and one of the techs looks at me, a pharmacy technician, and she looks at me and she says, that customer just said, I can't believe he said that to me. And, and she says, well, he always says things like that. And then she comes over to me and she says, I just don't know anybody who talks the way you talk to people. And what she was referring to was very specifically the jokes I was making in front of the customer and using words like, hey, thank you for your business. If you really watch the way that other people talk to customers, they often say things like, well, there you go, Fred, you're all set. Fred is giving you his business, and as far as Fred is concerned, that is a gift, right? So you need to do two things. You need Number one, you need to thank him for that gift, and then number two, you need to give him a gift in return, right? What Bob Berg, my friend, would call the power of, of reciprocation, and that gift is your friendship. So what friends do is they keep it light and they ask about things that are going on in the other person's life. They make comments like, for instance, one of my favorite things, I go, oh, you're picking that up for your supervisor, are you? And the old man looks at it and, of course, it's for his wife. Oh, you got that right. So now he feels like I really get what he's doing there. And, and you know, that's why, you, you know, I wear Mickey Mouse ties to work because I found that customers don't really want me to be professional. They want me to be approachable. And so then when they ask me about my tie, like what I'm wearing right now, I hope you can see it well, I say this is my reminder not to take life too serious. Because quite frankly, you know, I wait on 500 people a day. If I'm not careful, I can get caught up in that. You know, quite often you get three or four or five times in a row where somebody says, hey, drop everything and work on my problem. You can get pretty stressed out if you're not careful. But, you know, what I've learned is that we're responsible for our response, right? There's always a space between what happens to us and how we respond to that. Our job is to lengthen that space and make sure that our response actually benefits us and the way it can really benefit you in customer service is by keeping things light and fun. So what I do, kind of what you were talking about when people say, well, I want to treat customers the way I want to be treated, I turn it into a question. So when I'm teaching it, I say to the person, here's what I want you to do. Whenever you're working with a customer, and again, the customer can be your spouse, your children, you know, anybody in your family or whoever, whenever you're working with a customer, you always want to ask yourself this question. Is what I'm saying right now what I would want to hear if I was the person I'm talking to? Period. If I wouldn't like what I'm saying, why in the world would I think that the person on the other side of my mouth would like it? Right? So when we go and we, 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 we complain and we talk negative and we criticize, well, duh. They, of course they're not happy. You know, one of the things that I find fascinating as I get older is in my younger life, my ability to excuse myself for criticizing or being negative about things to other people. Well, of course they want to hear my wisdom as to what they should be doing, right? Why aren't they thanking me for that? That's silly. But when I was younger, I didn't know any better. And now I see people who are much older than I am that still haven't learned. Haven't you seen people like that? Oh, yes. And, it, and it's, I think the other side of that coin, though, too, is, um, you know me, I tend to be really positive, and, and, um, and I think if people look at me and go, how can you be that positive, or how can you, I don't know. Some people don't like that either. But you know what? I've also gotten over that, because you can't please everybody. <laughs> So, you know, being, being a really positive person, even through adversity, and people are like, well, how can you be so positive when you're going through that? And I just have to look at them and go, well, I can be really not happy right now. I have that choice, too, <laughs> you know? So, you know what? You're never going to please everybody, and at the end of the day, you have to be happy with you. And that's what I usually say. 
because you aren't you aren't gonna please everybody so you at some point you have to be happy with yourself and that's all you can do you know mm -hmm. and and that's and that's that's that is to me the bottom line <laughs> so mm -hmm. and you know you know what it's like because you deal with people every single day and by the way no we can't see that tie so now I'm curious what is the tie today I'm gonna turn the camera down oh it is a Mickey Mouse yay and you know what's funny is that was given to me as a gift by one of my coworkers because I have a whole collection and, and, and that's fun for them. Okay, now don't turn it all the way up. You gotta turn it back down because now you're like chopped your head off. All right, how do we do now? Okay, no, a little <laughs> more down. No, the other way, back up. I'm sorry. Say when. Okay, there we go. Now we have Corey back. Perfect. So, you know, that made it fun for my coworkers because then they want to go out and get me a different Mickey Mouse tie that I don't already have. And it's really interesting because it's a tough one to explain upwards in that the customers really appreciate people that they can talk to. And I, I wrote a story about how that actually happened that I learned that. You want to know how that, how that happened? I used to work with these two really, 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 really mean people. And they were the professional pharmacists. They were very, very stiff and very sterile. Well, I was a huge Chicago Bulls fan. You know, my whole life, the Chicago Bulls were stuff like 8 and 40. And then the Michael Jordan years came out just as I was coming out of college. And, and so the Bulls were like two or three rounds out from winning the championship. And I said to my boss, who was a really mild-mannered but a really nice guy, I said, hey, if the Bulls win the championship, can I wear my Bull sweatshirt to work? And he, he thought about it, and he said, you know what? Okay, go ahead and do that. I like it when people support their teams. Well, a few weeks later, I'm at, at this bar after a softball team with some friends of mine, and, and even though I didn't drink, I, I was there, and this, this, this little guy called John Paxson comes out of nowhere and makes all the three-point shots to win the championship for the Bulls. The big players that year were Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and, and Horace Grant. And here's this, here's this guy, you know, he's only about six feet tall. He's nailing all these big shots, and the Bulls win the, the NBA championship. So the next day, of course, I'm fired up, and I come in wearing this bright red sweatshirt. Well, these two mean people, they run right up to my boss, and they say, look at him, that's totally unprofessional. You need to send him home and make him change. And what can my boss do? He's like, well, I told him he could. So we're just going to have to ride it out. It's only one day. Well, I felt really bad for them because every single customer, I mean, Michael Jordan was enormous, right? Every single customer comes in, oh, my God, did you see that game last night? Little Johnny Paxson, he's out there nailing the three-pointers and blah, 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 and they're talking about the whole tournament, and they're just wild. And so what happened was this, this sweatshirt actually became a, 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 an ice-breaking point. And I learned that most people aren't leaders. Most people aren't just going to walk up and start a conversation unless you give them an icebreaker, right? Well, then shortly after that, one of the customers gave me as a gift a fish tie. It was literally a tie that looked like a fish. So I'm looking at this tie one day before I'm going to work, and I'm like, you know what? I'm 23 and a half years old. I'm bold. What the heck? So I wear this fish tie, literally same story. Customers are like, oh, God, that's so funny, and that's really cool, and, and everything. And I just decided, you know what? Customers don't want me to be professional. They want me to be someone they can talk to. Why? Because they're scared about their health. Because, you know what? They're fatigued and tired of bustling around a big department store. And let's face it, the world is really short on fun people. We're funner than heck till we hit a certain age and then all of a sudden we stiffen up, we take a few hits, now we're no fun anymore, right? Like how many people you know that can't be fun unless they have a six pack in them? Why? Because we don't want to look foolish. Well, you know what? When I walk up to a customer who's been waiting too long and I say, hey, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I was busy being inefficient. I mean, wow, I just took that whole fence, that angry face and took it right down. And so what happens? By being just a little bit of, of able to laugh at myself, I've made it so much easier. And so then you develop those friendships. Hey, Fred, what in the heck did you do to your head? Oh, my God, you wouldn't believe it. He tells you the story. 
And so what happens is when something goes wrong, maybe next month or next week or next year, Fred is going to cut you some slack. You know, like if you're out of the medicine he needs or if you had to wait too long, he's going to wait to talk to you because you're the guy with the tide. You're the guy who really cares about Fred. You're not the guy at the DMV who goes, next, right? Doesn't that make life more fun for everybody? I think it's also that you're also giving them permission to be themselves. And, and again, that makes a big difference. I do the same thing. I mean, I know some people, I have so, you know, it's funny. I, I, most of my clients will email me, you know, obviously through my email. And I have a lot of boundaries with my clients, you know. And, and I do have some clients that still, well, when they're in stress, they'll still ping me on Facebook. But I've also set up really strict boundaries on Facebook, okay. If, you know, no emailing me on Facebook past, you know, a certain time. But I do have certain clients that, you know, that are paying me, obviously extra or whatever that have a little leeway that if they're really stressed out that they can you know ping me on Facebook or whatever but anyways but it's, it's very interesting it, it, you're giving permission to be themselves you know and it's it, it's a very interesting thing when you allow people to be themselves that opens a very different door when they can it's also I'll, I'll give you another interesting example and the reason why I'm bringing this a lot of consultants they won't share of themselves so, and that's why I'm bringing up the boundary situation. Okay, here's the thing. If you're not going to tell your clients, okay, a little bit about yourselves, why in the hell are they going to tell, you know, anything about themselves to you? And if you're a consultant, you need, the more you know about your client or your prospect, the more, the better you can serve them and give them value or problem solve for them. It's like the same thing with a company, right? The more you know about a company, the better you can serve them, problem solve, and put together a better package for them, correct? So, and it's like an icebreaker. So the more you share of yourself, the more they're going to feel that you're building a trust factor, correct? But okay. now, most people have this whole boundary thing, right? <laughs> I, I can't share certain things because if I share certain things, then I'm violating ethics or I'm violating a boundary thing. It's not professional, like you were talking about. It's professional, like invisible boundary line, right? But the thing is, the more you share of yourself, the more authentic you are, the more you are you, the more you're building that trust factor with the client, with the person, right? Where then they, like you said, telling this, you storytelling, you being yourself, being a little bit funny, being a little bit edgy, being a little less professional even though I don't think that's really true I don't think it's less professional I think you just you're you're melting that boundary a little bit for them now to trust you more so they feel more comfortable with you to be able to share it with you does that make sense oh totally what you're talking about is is what I call the law of the connection as you know I'm launching a book in about a month and a half called what a lousy story and one of the world's lousiest stories is that you know what, Carly, I can't care too much about you as one of my employees or one of my customers because if I do, then you'll lose track of who's actually in authority. And that makes me laugh so hard because I'll tell you what, I, you know, I'm a supervisor at work, but I don't need to tell anybody because as soon as something goes wrong, everybody turns around and is looking at me. Here's the deal. People will not connect with you unless you're willing to share openly and freely with them. It's what they call trust. No one trusts anyone who leaves it in the box. We're always got to leave, we always feel like we got to leave a little in the tank, leave a little secret, leave a little in the closet because we don't want everybody to know the real us. Well, I'll tell you something that happened in real life and this really, really was interesting. A buddy of mine says, I need you to run my mastermind group for me. You know, I got to be out of town and I need you to go. So I go there, right, and I'm talking just like I normally talk. And often, because of the way I conduct my life and myself, I don't really remember everything that I said. I don't really focus so hard on the words in, 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 in a, as much as I want to focus on how I make the other person feel, right? And so I was with this person for dinner a few weeks later that was part of that mastermind group, and she said, can I tell you something? And I said, what? And she said, you know, a few weeks ago when you ran that mastermind group and you were talking about a few years back how when you were totally anxious and stressed out all the time and how your blood pressure got really high and how you had to go on medication for both 
and how you didn't know how you were going to find your way out of it until you actually, you know, started living on purpose. And I, I walked and you walked us through all that. And I said, yeah. And she said, Corey, when you, somebody who I thought was like totally impermeable to all of that, started talking about words like anxiety and, and depression and blood pressure, I, I just, I couldn't believe it, but I felt so close and connected to you. And I really want you to help lead me through the problems that I'm having. So my point is, if you think that the world sets up so that you're going to come down off the mountain and people are going to follow you, you've missed the boat. People aren't interested in icons. Maybe at one time they were, but people really want fellow life travelers who are going to hug them when they need to be hugged, take them by the hand when they need to be taken by the hand, and who they can really look eye to eye to. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an out and out fact that, you know what, life is hard. And sometimes you need people to help you. And, and, and to try to act like you're not part of the struggle of life is just, number one, it's not fair to you and it's not fair to the people you're trying to help. Don't you think? Oh, I absolutely agree. I think too many people are, are trying to um, say I'm all that or, you know, I'm, um, I, I don't know. I, I have, I have, I won't go there. <laughs> but I absolutely agree. I think, I think too many people try to sweep skeletons under the cla under the carpet, if you will. We all have a past. We, we've all done things maybe we were ashamed of or um, maybe at some point we've had to go on an antidepressant for whatever, or like you said, have had to take meds for maybe we were anxious at one point or whatever. And I think too many people are afraid to admit this or that. And, and the thing is, we've all done things. We've all experienced things. And you know what? Those are things that have made us grow. And, and, and it also made us who we are today. And all leaders, famous people, have been here and are now here. And, and, and multitudes of people that are famous have gone through many, many, many failures. And, and here's the thing. The failures, the key is to have gotten the lessons. And, and now here's the other key, though. is not just have gotten the lessons. It's have you then implement, not just gotten lessons. It's have processed, processed the lessons, integrated the lessons, and then implemented the lessons. Okay? So, and then taking action upon the lessons. So those are the key things from that. And, and then sometimes you are going to have, I mean, life is not like this. It's not a linear thing. It is definitely a roller coaster ride. So, I mean, that's just life. It is. It is what it is. So, I mean, I have no problem, you know, discussing, discussing my life with my clients and, and telling what I go through. And, as, and if anything, I think it's a very valuable tool to use to help clients get through hurdles and to use what we've gone through as tools to go, hey, I've done this, and guess what? It taught me this. I've done this, and it's taught me this. And from that, now I'm doing this. So I think everybody has valuable tools to teach others from as to not go through those pitfalls. And I think I think that's why all of us, we're all that all of us, we're all valuable teachers to others. And every single person is a unique teacher to others. And that is why everybody's drawn to different people. Personalities, teaching styles, learning styles, because we all like to learn a different way. We're drawn to different personalities. I talk fast, other people talk slow. You know, everybody's drawn to different things. Yeah, I, I talked to a guy this week. He's an artist guy. You know, and in many ways, this guy's life is a complete mess, right? And, and he brings in his paintings to show me at the pharmacy. So I took a break, and we went up to the restaurant inside of the, uh, the store I work at, and he's pulling out these paintings, and I'm like, dude, you're a genius. I mean, you're just a, a, a genius. He really was the most talented you know, artists I probably ever talked to, but in, in so many ways, his life is a mess. In so many ways, my life is a mess. You know, I, I told my doctor one time, I said, you know, it's so funny. People come up to me at the pharmacy and they say, you know what, Corey, you've got it all together. And I'm like, oh, I do, do I? <laughs> the smoke and the mirrors are working. I mean, everybody either is a mess right now or has been a mess or is on their way to being a mess. We're all just people having a human experience. So to try to think that, you know what, I'm above stepping down to your level, whatever that means, is just ridiculous. 
And really what's really funny is that you are successful to the degree that you add value to others. And that's one of the things I really wanted to make sure that, I, that we touched on is because the reason I call it leadership-based customer service is I think we've all experienced the, the, the corporate message or the supervisor or even the friend who thinks, well, I want you to treat the customers better than I treat you. And, and I just find that very, very interesting that you, you get a supervisor out there who treats his people like dirt because he won't make those connections. He won't say, hey, Carly, you know what, we're in this together. And then he wonders why his people won't treat the customers the way he expects them to. And I think that's tragic because I think it happens far too often. I think it's so easy for us as people to really take other people for granted. And I think if, if, if we can sum this up in one sentence, it's that there is no such thing as a lifetime customer. There are customers that you have multiple experiences every day or every week or every month, but you can't say that because I treated you good once, you're going to stay with me forever. It's like the, the honeymoon effect wears off. In relationships, in marriages, in, in in parental roles. I mean, how many people do you know that their children won't even talk to them as as grown up adults? Why? Because you thought that you you took them to one sports game, or your spouse because you courted her once, and now you don't treat her as the object of your infect, affections. You know why would why would she want to stick around? So so my point is, don't take people for granted. Really take the opportunity to make people feel special as something that sets you apart. And that's what you need to do with your employees. If you want your employees to treat the customers, A number one, like the customers are the most important people in the world, you have to treat your employees like they're A number one, the most important people in the world. Do you not? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Corey, as usual, our time absolutely flies. And as usual, this is a podcast also, not just a video. So I want you to let people know where they can find you. Well, right now I'm really excited about something that I'm doing. I'm 48 years old and I'm fat and out of shape. How's that for being transparent? But I have a real heart for the children of St. Jude's Children's Hospital. And one of the things that I'm doing right now at the time of this recording, it's April 10th, and I've set up myself – to run the Chicago Marathon on October 12th for the children of St. Jude's. The link, if you want to sponsor me at all, is www.helpingunderdogs.com. So check me out there. Check out the webpage I've set up for the children of St. Jude's. And if you can donate a dollar, I'll appreciate you for that. And um, what else is going on? You've got a bunch of other exciting things going on. And where, well, else they, where else can they find you, though, besides that? I know we can find you on Facebook, and if we Google you, I mean, because I, I know right now you're in the middle of rebuilding and rebranding, so they can find you on Facebook if they put in Corey and spell your last name for people because um, your last name is not simply spelt. It's J-A-H-N-K-E. One of the ideal ways to connect with me is to go to the free ebook.com and download my free ebook that's, that's called The Prescription for Sanity, Purpose, How to Beat Anxiety, Depression, and Fear in Seven Simple Steps. It's okay, so what, what most people don't know is I always put together a blog post when I, when I interview anybody. So what I'll do is I'll have all that information on the blog post I put together on this interview with Corey. And so you'll be able to find out all that beautiful stuff on the blog post I put together. And usually, Corey and I usually do an interview usually usually every other month. Um, it's just been a little bit, we've both been really busy. So, um, However, we will do that, and I'll put together all his information on there, as well as the site for the St. Jude's um, thing that he's doing. And Corey, it's, as usual, it's always a delight having you on. And I know it's been a while, I'm, and it's not going to be as long this time. I really look forward to when you launch your new site and everything, so I'm really looking forward to that as well. So um, I will put down your Facebook page, too, so people can connect with you there, because you always have wonderful blog posts and everything that you post. You've got to check out his blog posts. They're amazing. So um, they're always really worthwhile reads. So I really look forward to putting all that info out. So as usual, thank you so much, Corey. And thank you for having me. It's just a, just a pleasure to connect with you. 
You've been with your host, Carly Lissa Thorne, and you can always find me at carlylissathorne.com. And look forward to seeing you guys all next week. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening, and I look forward to seeing you, as I said, next week. Have a great one, everyone. Good night.